everyone wants to be the best. Everyone wants to go to the best universities, the best schools, and it's exactly the same for actors. Everyone wants to go to the best drama school. So what is the best drama school? If you want the answer to that, I can't give you an easy answer, and no one can give you an easy answer. The reason is, is because it depends. It depends on what you want, and it depends on what your goals are. So people who don't know, I run How To Drama, which is the biggest blog, the biggest website for people applying to drama school. About 20,000 people apply every year, and we get most of them through howtodrama.com. So I get asked all the time, which is the best school? And we are looking at doing a document or doing a free review every year on the best drama schools because it changes every year, depending on the faculty, depending on the funding. But the big debate is which are the best types of institutions? Is it the established traditional big schools like the RADAs, the Lambdas, the Guildhalls? Or is it the more up and coming institutions, maybe the East 15s, the Rose Brufords? The big debate is whether or not you should go for one of the big institutions or go for an up-and-coming school. On this article, I'll follow exactly what it says. Every school is going to say that they're the best. Every school is going to say, talk to our alumni, we have the best people. So I would be careful about listening with too much weight about what the schools will say. And the reason is, is they need as many applicants as possible, partly because they make money out of the applicants. You'll notice you'll have to pay a fee in order to have the pleasure of auditioning. But also they need as big a pool as possible to choose from because they need to have a large diversity of people in every cohort. Similarly, students are always going to say that they went to the best drama school, even if they didn't do very well out of it. So everyone says that they made a great decision. So be careful when you're talking to alumni as well. Then we get to the nitty gritty. There's two different types of drama school, but there's also two different categories. So you've got the institutions that have been here a long time, sometimes hundreds of years. And the main one is obviously the Radas, the Lambdas, the Centrals, the Guildhalls. And then you've got the up and coming schools. You've also got the categorization of schools that are in the middle of nowhere, Oxford School of Drama, I'm looking at you, all the schools that are in a, a, a city. We talk about this a lot on the website, but there is a, an accredited, and I'm putting that in inverted commas, an in, accredited list of drama schools, and they are the post Drama UK list. Now, Drama UK is defunct, but this is the list of schools which are in inverted commas accredited. But the general rule is that if they are part of that X drama UK list or if they're a conservatoire, then you know that you're getting a very high level of education because the level of education in the UK acting and drama system is very high. Internationally, it, it's extremely well respected. The things you should take into account are whether or not you should train inside or outside of a big city. Because if you want the social experience, the student experience and great nightlife then you have to be in a city because if you're in the, in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere then you're not going to be able to go out and have that social experience so you need to ask that question of yourself and only you know the answer to that do you want a specialist training or general training some schools specialize in the meisner technique some schools specialize in a stanislavskian technique some schools are more geared towards theatrical training or screen acting training. I cover that in a different article. We, we, we don't need to talk about that now. But the point is that you need to do as much research on the pool of institutions as possible. You need to do as much research as you possibly can. That is talking to alumni, take it with a grain of salt, talk it, talk to the faculty, take what they say with a grain of salt. Um, do read up um, on their website, uh, download their, um, uh, their, uh, their, their booklets, their brochures, um, make sure you look at their halls of residencies. You need to get as much um, sort of, you need to get as good of, of an impression of the school as you possibly can, especially if you've got in. But 
the thing I always say is once you've chosen your schools, you've auditioned and maybe you've got into one, the most important thing, especially if you have to choose between two institutions, is go with your gut. Don't go with what a teacher tells you to do or a parent or an alumni or, or um, someone you may know. Go with your gut. Go with the school that you have done your research on. You feel like it's a good choice because there's going to be many people pulling you either way. And you might get a call from the head of faculty at one of the schools. The, the thing is, you're not going into acting training in order to tick boxes. A lot of people who apply to drama school want to be actors. They love, they want to have a career. They love the um, the idea of of earning a living doing something you love. You know, this isn't an economics degree. It's not a finance degree. It's something that you have to pour your heart and soul into, and that starts at the first choice. Okay, so that's what I'll leave you on. Uh, we have to finish the podcast now. Um, if you have any more questions, then feel free to get in touch with us. I'll do another plug for the book. We have uh, the drama school, the complete how-to drama guide. Um, feel free to head over to our website and you can pick it up on Amazon. All right. Until next time.